right. Okay. I am here with Chris Myers. Tell me about yourself, bro. We know you're from Nicaragua, but what part do you come from? Tell me about Bluefields, right? Yes, first of all, I just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to be a part of your podcast. You know, I know we had this coming for a long time and it finally happened, you know. So yeah. Yes, um, so yeah, I'm from Bluefields, Nicaragua. For those who don't know where Bluefields, Nicaragua is, is in Central America, near Costa Rica. Um, I'm going to say I was born and raised there most of my life, and I actually left Nicaragua when I was 19 years, and then I moved here to the USA, but the first place I moved to was um, Tampa, Florida. Mm -hmm. Okay, bro, you got to remember that Americans are poorly educated. Tell us some countries around Nicaragua. We need to know where it's at, really. Okay, so it's going to be... so. I know a lot of people usually can't relate to Costa Rica. So that is why I say Costa Rica, you know, but anywhere that is around Honduras, El Salvador, Belize, like anywhere in Central America, like those places, them, you're going to know Nicaragua because all of us at one time were united. You know what I'm saying? Like all those places that I mentioned were united back in the time. So that's where Nicaragua is, is at. And then Bluefields is located on the coast side of Nicaragua. That is where most of us black people there, you know, on the Pacific side, that's where the um, mestizos them would be. When I say mestizos, for those who don't know, I'm talking about the people them that usually only speak Spanish. And then the Afro-descendant them, we're around the coast side, like Blue Fields, Lagoon, Carn Island, Puerto Cabezas, and all of those other places there. Okay. And something I want to know, because I'm sure you get this all the time. I'm sure people say you sound Jamaican or something like that, right? Talk to me about the history or just as much as you know why you have that accent. And, and, and does, do most people in Nicaragua sound like you or in Blue Fields anyways? Well, I must say on the core side, definitely, if you're going to hear people talking, them most likely going to sound like me. I'm not going to say worse than me because I, it can sound like a bad thing, but mm -hmm. their English is much more broken than mine. Um, I have been in this United States for like over 15 years now, so my accent won't be as strong and less I'm around my people. But, um, you know, um, I uh, can't tell you exactly year and time because like I'm just learning these things them as well. You get yeah. me? I'm educating myself as I'm learning. But what I can tell you guys is that back in the days as well in time of slavery, there were Africans and Jamaicans that end up um, in being slave over there in Nicaragua or blue fields, right? Because mm -hmm. the, the, um, the slave ship one of the time end up crashing over there as well. They used to go there back in the time, um, look for like um, supplies, you know, taking rest and all of those things, them in the rear escondido. So them time, them the King Mosquitia, um, those were the people them that used to rule in our country back in them time. And then, you know, the, the Africans and the, and the Jamaicans then come over, end up blending with the rest of indigenous people that is over there. And most of the slaves them end up staying on the coast side where we where we from, you know. So that is why um, a lot of people would actually think so that we sound like Jamaicans because like our, our history actually run deep. And there in Jamaica as well, they have like um, the mosquito people, the mosquito people, them that end up moving over there as well. And they have a blue fields that is in Jamaica. So when we say, when I say I'm from blue fields, people may most likely think is blue fields that is in Jamaica and not blue fields in Nicaragua. Yeah. But yeah, that is what going on. Uh, Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, no. You good, you good, bro. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and so 
like I, I, I kind of asked you this already, but I, I kind of just want to know is when you're walking around where you're from, do you see a lot of black people? Is there a lot of people that look like you or more mestizo people or what? Bro, we over we're just multicultural. So you may see a bunch of different faces around there, but when you hear them talk, you might hear them talking Creole. Just yeah. like you get me. So we had like the the Sumos, we got the Mosquito, we got the Creole, we got the um like I think we got Mayas as well. So Garifonas, we also got Garifonas down there. But there is a bunch of we actually in Central America and like we have the largest population of in the um black people. You get yeah. me? So like people gonna look just like me and the Caribbean coast side, but you know, black come in different shades, bro. So yeah, you, know, like you may see them look more looking like Indian whatsoever, or they might be more darker than me. But when you hear them talk, like like maybe like we from Bluefields may sound like how I talk, right? And then like the people them from Lagoon, which is another part of the coast, they might have like a slight different in accent. They may drag their word a little bit more than the way we do but all of us and then some places we we might speak spanish better than other places like maybe in blue fields you have more people that speak the spanish better and in laguna or kind island they speak it a little bit more or less well yeah it varies to be honest okay so i have a bunch of questions based off I mean, of that I mean. <laughs> for one i want to know so you you came here when you were 19. I want to know, what do you think about, you know, like the way race is treated here? Because, you know, it's like you're either black, you're white or you're Latino or Hispanic or whatever people might say. But is it like that back where you're from? Like, do people even call themselves black or what? Well, um, dad, when it comes to being black in general, I feel like we always get treated the same exact way. It doesn't matter where we are. You know, some places like it may be stronger than other places. Um, I can say in Nicaragua, I had my share of racism growing up. And it's not even only with people that is um that is like mestizos or mesquite or whatever, because like I said, we're multicultural. It, it also happened with your own people. Mm -hmm. You get me? And yeah. that, that I have noticed So here also, there is black people out here that don't like black people as well. There is, you know, Mexicans mm -hmm. that don't like Mexicans or so on and so forth. But um, black people get treated the same exact way everywhere you go. That, um, one thing I'm going to say, though, what I noticed, there is a big difference in the racism out here, bro. Like, you get killed for stuff like that. You get me? Mm -hmm. In my country, nobody is like shooting you down or like beating you up or nothing. They may call you like names. You get me? And, yeah. you know, like the police brutality and things them that I have seen, bro. Like most of the things them that I've seen here in the United States, like it don't happen in my country. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'm not I'm not fearing walking in my country because I'm black. I may hear a name calling her like, you know, like people may not like me because of my color, but I'm not I'm not in fear of my life whenever I'm mm. out here in in my country. So that is something that I came over here that like I I have seen, I have learned a lot about being black over here. Mm -hmm. me, even at work, there was a time my my experience of racism was I have a disagreement with with one of my supervisor and I spoke back to him and he looked at me and told me said that if it was back in time of slavery, I would have never talked back to him. What? That hurt me, that hurt me. up to this day I'm talking to you about it. It hurt me because. Like, when I hear that, bro, my mentality was to just go ignorant. You get me what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, and stuff like that. Because, like, I mean, we have so much history to where uh, we, we as black people, we came a long way. You get me what I'm saying? But sometimes we have to think, bro, because we already are profiled. So we have to show them so that we are better than them. We're smarter. We move different. You know what I'm saying? Them, yeah. Them, them look at we like if we're like this vicious 
creature, this and that. So we have to show them so that we're educated and we can put we can we can put ourselves on them level. You get me? Yeah. So I just let that slide, brother. But it's something that I carry with me <laughs> because like I felt like at that time I should have done something. And maybe that is why it's still keep me up inside. Yeah, that's that's tough, bro. I can't say that I would have reacted the same, but it's good that you didn't do nothing crazy for real though, because in the end, when you do react violently, you're the one that loses, you know what I mean? Yes. So it, it sucks that it's like that. But um, so, okay, so you say the racism is more attached to, to violence here, but back home, did you experience racism from other Latino people or, or what? Oh uh, yeah, bro. So look at this, right? So regard, even though I'm Latino, right? I'm I'm Latino out here because that I'm from a I'm from a Latin country. You get yeah. me? But when I'm in Nicaragua, bro, I'm just black. Mm. I'm just black. I'm not Latino in my country. I'm just black. So like they treat me like black. Yeah. So there is that, there is that racism towards like um like us mostly like in the cities and the departments. So let's say like in the city would be like Managua. You know, that is where the plane have to actually pitch before you go anywhere else in Nicaragua. Yeah. So when you come to the Pacific and the rest of the departments, there is 12 departments. You got, you know, Granada, Leon, Chontales, and all those other places them. And then after that, you can go like on the coast side. You get me? So like in those places, they're not used to having so much black people. But until now, like over the years, we start migrating more into the departments, more into the city. So they, they start seeing us much more, you know. So I don't know. I haven't lived over there in so long. I don't know how time have changed, right? But yeah. like when I was there, Bro, like if I'm walking on the street, there might be like a mestizo couple coming or just a female or a guy. And then we just cross over because like I'm labeled already. You get me? I'm black, so I might be a thief or I might be a drug addict. You mm. get me? So they scared of us because they have a perspective of of us just by of the by our skin color. You get yeah. me? So that is that is as far as as I see that go, like they calling me names or, you know, they don't want to walk beside me they, if I'm riding the bus, um, you know, they might not want to sit beside me and, and stuff like that. You get me? But over here, bro, it's just, it's, it's, the racism is a different level, man. <laughs> it's a different level, brother. It's a different level. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's real. You know that I always say there is leverage in life, right? <laughs> You're right, though. There's levels. There's levels to everything, bro. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like I can't talk about other places because I only been to the United States and my country. You get me what yeah. I'm saying? So, like, out oh, here, bro, is is brutal. Dog. I came over here and I learned so much and. You know, just being over here and learning, looking a bit back about my history and just about my people, dog, and, and seeing like what we actually passed through. Because in my country, dog, they don't teach us about Martin Luther King or none of them people. I never heard about those people them until I moved to the United States. For so real? Like, yes. So in the past 15 years, I'm learning you guys' culture. I'm saying you guys is because North America, right? Yeah, and yeah. I'm learning my culture as well because like anywhere in the world, they try to erase black history or they don't teach you the right history. You get me? Yeah. So I'm learning my culture, my history, and I'm learning the things then that happen here in the United States. And all around is just sad, brother. It's yeah. Just a sad thing. That is, it is sad, man. Um it's it's tough to deal with, man. It's tough to deal with. So the term, okay. So earlier you said when you're when you're back home, you know, you're not you're, you're nothing, you're just black, right? Here you're Afro-Latino because it's the United I States, whatever. Spanish because I speak Spanish or like yeah. 
because I mean, from a Spanish country. I was I was gonna ask you, how do you feel about that terminology? Like, how do you do? Like, are you proudly Afro Latino, or do you feel like you just have to say it, or what? Um, no, brother, I'm just proud to be who I am. Yeah. Get, I just, well, who are you? <laughs> I'm I'm Chris. I'm Chris <laughs> Myers. I'm Nicaraguan, you know, and through history, I am who I am. You get me? I can't yeah. change history, bro. I yeah. can't change the things them that happened in the past. I can't change the country where I was birthed from. You yeah. get me? And you know, there is people that get mad, like because even like like people from home or people like maybe from another island or you know, people that may say that they're much more woke than me. They get mad when I say that I'm Afro-Latino because they want me to say that I'm Afro-Nicaraguan. Bro, I'm Afro-Nicaraguan, I'm Afro-Latino, I'm Black, <laughs> Spanish. Like, I'm all of those things because of history. Yeah. Because of where I was born, you know? So I just embrace everything brother and i don't worry about what no one say because at the end of the day everyone got an opinion if you live for other people brother you will never be happy with who you are as a person you get You're me right. so yeah. you just have to embrace everything that come with you in this life and just make much of it if you want to look at me as afro nicaraguan and i want to look at me as afro as afro latino then this is my life brother I can say whatever I feel. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if I want to call myself Afro Nicaraguan, then I'm going to call myself Afro Nicaraguan. And then somebody else is going to look at me and say, but you're Afro Latino. You get me? Yeah. So I just take everything in one and I just embrace it without worrying what no one say or what no one feel. I just live, I just do me and live my life. That's how I'm I respect that because. Uh... <laughs> I watched a I watched a handful of um of videos about Afro Latinos and bro la gente en, en los comentarios siempre dice Afro Latino no existe o Afro Latino es una palabra racista and I'm like if if you didn't call yourself that then there would somebody else would get mad like oh you're not mm -hmm. acknowledging your roots and where you come yes. from or whatever so that's why I want to ask you that because like. What are you really supposed to do? You're always going to piss somebody off, right? So. You always, brother. That is why you just have to do you. You get you know what I'm saying? I mean, if they want to be mad about you being yourself, then so, so, so be it. You get me? Because you don't, you as a man already know you can't make everybody happy. And when you're making somebody right. else, you're making somebody else sad. So what are we supposed to do? Yeah, you're right, bro. You're right, man. Um, Okay. So we were just talking about you speaking Spanish. Uh, I think I already know this, but we're going to tell the people. <laughs> English is your first language. When did you, because you weren't forced to learn Spanish, but there's a lot of Spanish happening around in your country. And I think in another interview that you've done, I heard you say that maybe a lot of the signs and things, anything like political might be in Spanish. And so you need to know that if you want to get around in the country, right? So, well, the, our, you know, well, most of the history then say that, you know, Cristobal Colón this and Cristobal Colón that, and, you know, we already know Spain and them Spanish people and the English people, them is, you know, who did the whole slavery thing, right? So mm -hmm. since our country is based on Spanish, they actually make Spanish an official language in our country. So as kids now, you know, just like you that birth from black parents, your language is English because that's what they speak inside of the house. Now, when you walk outside of the house, you're in a whole different world. Mm -hmm. You're in a Spanish country. You get me what I'm saying? So in school, everything is Spanish. Every mm -hmm. single thing is Spanish. Just the only subject is English. You get me? So we're forced. It's not like we're forced, but we have to. We have to learn it if we want to get around. And it's not like necessarily that we have to do it. But I mean, you have to make much of the opportunities them as well too. You get me? Yeah. So like, um, 
from from child i was exposed exposed to the spanish language and you know just like you that is learning it you know like i i was lucky lucky enough that i i have always been around it and i was exposed to it much more so like i i it just become like second nature to me you get me yeah. and even though that you know a lot of people will look at me and say well you know like um you speak spanish fluently i still you got to remember that's not my language so like i still mess up on it yeah. but people look at me and think that i speak it fluently because you know you guys are are learning and, and you you guys may see that my spanish is so much better than yours or i speak it better than yours or that i don't make mistake but that's a lie you get yeah. what i'm saying i make mistake just like we make mistake in english as well too Oh yeah, I was going to say that. I was going to say people yes. make mistakes in their own yes, language. Yes, make mistake in English as well, but like everything in Spanish, brother, like I know I know most of everything and well what I do I know then I just make it a Spanish thing because yeah. like I can, I can do both. <laughs> but yeah, like our country, our country like it, it based is based off Spanish and even though like as a black man like i said earlier we live in where the spanish is there is a lot of people up to this day that don't speak it or don't speak it correctly like to the point where they are ashamed to speak it because they feel like just like somebody that just learning the language and and, and to ashamed because their spanish is not that good you get mm -hmm. me and that is because they're living in a country where it's Predominantly, predominantly, predominantly. Yes, that, that thing is what I say. Spanish, <laughs> that thing. Yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'm sure when you're back home, nobody questions your Spanish at all. But what about when you're here? Do you ever speak to somebody in Spanish and they're just like confused, like there's no way you speak Spanish, or they like reply back to you in English or something like that? Bro, when I'm over here, dog, is like my story is crazy. Like, they, they most in my country, they, they, they know so that most likely we speak Spanish, cause mm -hmm. we're from there. You get me? Yeah. So then, see a black man is most likely, like I would give it like a ninety percent and know that he speaks Spanish. Yeah. When I'm when I'm over here, everybody look at me just like they will look at you. And them surprised too if you speak Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. So just picture that. That's the same exact way they look at me. <laughs> Anywhere I go. But the difference between me and you is now that when I open my mouth, they hear an accent. So that make them more confused now. You get me? <laughs> so like, when, just by that, when they look at you and you speak, you, you talk, they see you, they not think you speak Spanish. But when you speak Spanish now, ah, they're surprised. But they still hear the United States, the, the North American accent. Now they hear it, they've seen this black man, regular. And I thought, wow, this man from the island, I just bought for me just now. And now I speak Spanish, they're like, bro, like then just like go crazy. Like they're more confused now, like what is going on here? You get me? Yeah. So like that have been my life story for the past 15 years. Like I always come to have to explain in who I am, where I come from, why the way I speak, the way I speak. And that don't only happen with our black people. It, it also happened with my island people and it also happened within the Latin community as well. Because if you think about it, there is Latin countries like Mexico or, or uh, Puerto Rico that they born speaking Spanish. You get mm -hmm. it? And, and most of them sometimes don't even speak English. But yeah. I can do both, and then I got an accent. So it's like, what is going on? And <laughs> <laughs> so for me, like I have been in like back and forth with with Latinos because they can understand why I can do all those things. And yeah. then I have come across like my Jamaican brother them, where like literally, bro, I have to pull out papers for them to believe me, so that I'm not even from Jamaica. <laughs> I literally arguing, nearly fist fighting. <laughs> to <pull my> <laughs> so like that, that have been my life story up to this day. Like just recently this happened to me. 
I gone to this food truck, Nicaraguan food truck. And you already know I'm Nicaraguan. You get me? But this yeah. lady, she's a Latina. She might be from Nicaragua as well. Mm -hmm. And um, she only speaks Spanish. And she see me. And the first thing she thought is that I was just a random black man, probably like looking for Nicaragua food or Puerto Rican food. And I start speaking Spanish to the lady. I, I actually to the same lady because I wanted to see the menu. And she looked at me and she said, Wow, you speak Spanish? I didn't know you speak Spanish. You don't look like you speak Spanish. And I'm like, Yeah, I speak yeah. Spanish. What does that even mean? You don't look like... I don't know, bro. I don't know. I mean, Spanish, Spanish is so global nowadays, bro. There is a lot of people speaking it. So I don't know what is the big surprise now of people being bilingual or multilingual or whatever the case may be. Yeah. One second, Dad. Hello, how come you know this? I mean, I don't know. When I don't in the interview, I haven't seen him in years, bro. He's um he's actually Nicaraguan also, but he was raised in Belize. So if you hear his accent, like his accent is not even like mine, but he's Nicaraguan. Oh yeah. Here, yes, yeah, this is like my first time seeing him since he was born as a kid. He's 14. And I'm talking to him, bro. And I don't understand him. <laughs> I don't understand him because his accent is different than mine. So I had to like spend hours with him to like actually like get the Belizean accent. So now we good. Yeah. But he, he don't speak Spanish though, right? No, his Spanish is like, I think he's like what we were talking about earlier. He's mm. shy to speak it because his Spanish is not up there. So he don't feel oh. comfortable speaking it. And Belize also speaks Spanish. And yeah. Nicaragua is Spanish, but he's not comfortable doing it. Mm, that's tough that's tough man if you're not comfortable then it don't even it don't even come out right anyway so you don't even yeah. want to do it you know what i'm saying I, you feel gotta like, I feel like you're you're more you're more latino than him <laughs> <laughs> nah bro you can't say that <laughs> you can't say that bro <laughs> it's not worried right. about it nah but uh so speaking of Spanish, I was gonna say how how does how does Spanish help you in your daily life um, when you're here? Does it help you get jobs? Does it help you? I already know it helps you um, talk to people because we'll we'll get into that later. But we know you have a YouTube channel. We know you have a group that helps people learn Spanish. But how does it help you in daily life? Mm, I don't look at it like. I don't know, bro, maybe because it's like so natural to me. It don't like, it's not like a big deal to me or anything. You get me? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't, I don't know if maybe if I wouldn't speak Spanish, if I wouldn't get a job or, you know, like I, I, I wouldn't have had the opportunities then that I have had in life. But um, I can say that with my recent job, like, like, the job that I was working, he actually, that was one of the reasons I got it though. Because mm -hmm. the person that interviewed me was a Spanish person. He was yeah. a Mexican guy. And he wanted to know if I was um bilingual. You know what I'm saying? And I let him know so that I speak Spanish. But I, to be honest, I really don't know how much it helped me by speaking Spanish because I just said it on my resume. But mm -hmm. I know when I'm, I know whatever job I work, and they know I speak Spanish, they always want to have me like a translator. That's something. You get yeah. me? And then, do they, do they like, test you? Like like the interviewer, do they ever like try to see if you really speak Spanish? And like, um, No, they just speak to me English. I mean, like it's either like if they see, if they see that on the paper already, then just would be like, oh, so you're bilingual and so you speak Spanish. And then I'll be like, yeah. And, and they then, don't even, they don't test you out? They yeah, don't. <laughs> like, I don't feel like they test me or anything. Like, they just be like, oh, okay, then. But then, like, during work and stuff like that, you know, maybe they need trans a translator. I'll be like, Chris, come here, you know? Then I would just, like, speak it for them, and, and that's it. Mm. I always thought they would have some kind of, like, some kind of test or something, bro. Like, what if you lying, bro? <laughs> 
<laughs> nah, um, well, if, if, the, if it's a tense, it might just be like, maybe like a little bit of a concept to have like Panyol, you know, and I'll be like, see, you have like Panyol, and maybe like a little simple conversation, but it's not like nothing like extraordinary, mm. like, you know, like mind blowing or anything like that. Okay. Know? Okay. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, This is a little, a little off track, but I was going to ask, do you feel less expressive with people that only speak english or only speak spanish do you ever feel like you want to say some shit but you're like ah, they're not gonna they're not gonna feel it because i need to say this in english or i need to say this in spanish you never feel like that no nah, bro and i never nah. feel like that i just i can express myself either way and um if i'm speaking spanish like i say and i can't find the word to say like the the, the exact word i want to say i I just try to say it in a different type of way where people might understand me, either Spanish mm. or English. Mm. I, I, I'm just like that comfortable speaking either language, you know, like I don't, I don't like, like put myself in a corner, you know what I'm saying, to where I can't yeah. speak. It's just natural. That's dope. That's dope. Um, so what, what else about U.S. culture and Nicaraguan culture are different. Like, what was maybe the main thing when you got here that you were like, yo, what is this? I don't like this. I don't like this. What is what I don't like? One thing what I didn't like so much, bro, is like, like fast food, brother. I'm not, I'm yeah. up to this day, I'm not used to that. <laughs> like I'm not used to like going out to eat and stuff like that because all my life, bro, have been home cooked meal. You get me? So yeah. I love, I love like my home food. So when I go out now and stuff like that, like I don't know, bro. The food is just so much different, and um, uh, it's not the CMG. I just rather like this warm meal from your spouse you know or from from your mom or from your auntie anybody you get yeah. me is at home and another thing that was like i i feel like there was a lot of lie before i moved to the united states bro because united <laughs> states was, <laughs> there was united states was paint paint to me like in this perfect world before yeah. I even moved to the United States. So first off, I wanted to say that I thought everybody in the United States was rich. <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I thought there was no black people in the United States because I only see white people going to my country. <laughs> I thought that like everything was like exactly how they show it on the TV, just like this beautiful place. No trash, no homelessness, <laughs> Ali. Like, like everywhere you go, just look like exactly like New York. That's what oh. I thought <laughs> before I moved to the United States. <laughs> and then I came here, and it was just like, bro, without a bit of fly, my first year being in the United States, I was ready to go back to Nicaragua. Oh, I'm not even surprised, bro, especially uh you're i'm sure you're very family oriented and that's not in america that's clear, not yeah that's not, not clear. Clear. I, I didn't i didn't work before i came to the united states i have always studied my mom supported me and stuff like that because she is the one that came over here and brought me and my sister you know so coming over here dog like when i first moved over here like my first 90 days most of the time I was by myself, bro. Like I hardly see my mom. I hardly see my little sister or my stepdad because they, he, he was always working. She was always working. My sister is in school. And then mm. I'm just home. I'm just home with a computer that I didn't even know how to use because then time I couldn't even afford a computer or know how to use a computer. I'm like typing with one finger type shit. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I said? Then time is my space and all of them things going on. So what I used to do to kill time, bro, I'm a big sport fan, a basketball fan. So like they had bought me a basketball um, 
whatever, them one, them that you put outside and you just shoot around. So that is how I kill a lot of my time, my first 90 days, like literally just shooting a ball. Yeah. Can you hoop? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, every everybody said they can hoop. That don't mean you can really hoop. I have to see it. I'll give you some if you want it. <laughs> All right. All right. We gotta we gotta play at least one game. One one day where are you are you in Houston right now? Yeah, I'm in Houston, bro. Okay. If I'm ever in Houston, I take you up on a one-on-one game, bro. Don't bully me though, you know, because I know you guys <laughs> You you know where your first day is, and I will know where my one is as well. So we just have to use our strength and weakness against each other. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna bully, bro. I was I was a guard, bro. I used to be like 130 pounds, bro, when I played basketball, bro. Bro, let me tell you something that you might laugh after. I'm gonna tell you something. When I moved from Nicaragua, I was weighing 125 pounds, right? Mm-hmm. I'm six three, six two, Ooh. whatever you wanna call it. When I, I've been here for 15 years and I have only put on 25 pounds in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta eat some more food, bro. <laughs> so yeah, I don't I got no gain to gain, bro. You gotta eat that fast food. It's cause you don't nah, want to eat that fast bro, food, bro. Nah, bro. I can't do that, bro. Like I, I'm not even gonna lie to you. This is why I hate fast food because like I used to work McDonald's when I was younger. I had two jobs, bro. Hustling, you know, because them time them I had just had my first kid, too, so I had to hustle. You get me? Yeah. Working two jobs, bro. And I have always been bullied a bit about being skinny ever since I was growing up as a kid. You know, all kind of names, call and shit like that. But then time then my 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 self esteem was low, so like I felt that. So when I came over here, they always say, "Oh, when you go to the United States, you're gonna get." You know, you're going to gain weight and this and that and the other. And they say, eat a lot of fast food, bro. And I working at McDonald's eating all in double quarter pounders, bro. I nearly end up, instead of getting weight, I nearly get a heart attack, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro hey, fast I, food. I used to eat like two or three quarter pounder a day while I'm working at McDonald's. And my oh, heart yeah. hurting, bro, and I had to quit that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would definitely get a heart attack like that, bro. Yeah, so that was yeah. one of my reasons as to why I get fast food. Okay, that's fair. All right, before we get off of here, let's talk about your channel. So, for one, why did you start your channel? My channel, I started it, I got to say, first off, you know, thanks to my fiance. Why? Because it was the same way with her, bro. It was a shock. Because before, when when I started hollering at her, like, you know, it was text message, whatever, social media, just writing regularly. But, you know, there was always a voice message as well, you know. So, like, I sent her a voice message and she'd be like, why you sound Jamaican? But you say you're Spanish, you know. So, like, it was like that, bro, like, literally, and then mm-hmm. time she was she was like learning the Spanish language all up in the like on uh, Latin culture and all of them things then so like she found that very interesting with me and even when we went on our first date it's like I had to prove to her so that I wasn't Jamaican and that I could have speak Spanish you get me and then um you know as we start continuing talking them time them I was like more focused on doing music and stuff like that you know um because i was an artist first music wise and then she looked at me and she told me personally she was like yo like your life is so interesting like why don't you start a youtube channel and i was like nah that's not for me you get me because then time them also I, I like i'm an artist but it was never like um anything that just like happened like happened for me you yeah. get me but she was like, but you're a people person and this and that. And I'm like, nah, that's not for me or none of them. Like that. I, don't, I don't know how to be in front of camera. I don't know how to talk to people. And she was like, nah, do it, do it. You're going to be great at it. And well, we, she, she convinced me. And that is how I end up starting my YouTube channel. And it's based stuff, basically, you know, family, travel, culture, and 
learning Spanish as well to, you know, like you said, I do help people like, you know, practice them Spanish, you know, because a lot of people that be trying to learn the language, the first thing they say that they don't have someone to talk to or they, they don't live in a country where they have that opportunity like what I grew up with. So I open my platform to bring everyone together and that way we can just become one family. Okay, speaking of that, I want to tell everyone watching that you help people for free, bro. A lot of people, yeah. you can't you can't even find somebody that will help you for free. So when when do you do your lives that I still haven't joined on? When do you, what days <laughs> do you do that? <laughs> well, there is, like, right now, since I just started up back, like, I, I haven't had, like, any specific date or time. Well, I have the time, but it's not, like, there's in specific. You no, know, maybe one week I feel like doing it three times, then I do it three times, you know, but most likely you announce it. Do, you announce it before you do yes, it, right? I always announce it before. Um so I'm, gonna put, I, your, I'm gonna put your Instagram in the in the description of this video. Y'all follow him on Instagram. He posts whenever he's gonna post the, the live on YouTube. And uh can anybody join that WhatsApp group chat? Yes, bro. Anybody that is interested in learning the language and willing to learn, you know, and also be, you know, like, like, um, how you say, like, I also want to help other people learn as well, you know, they're more than welcome to join. All you have to do is just ask me, you know, if you want to be a part of the live, all you have to do is tell me, I, I send the link to you if you want to be a part of the Spanish group, I, I, let, I send the link to you as well. And that there is nothing else behind it, brother. Yeah. Okay. So I'm um, like I said, I'm gonna put your Instagram and your YouTube in the description. Anybody that wants to learn Spanish and wants to actually talk to people, follow him on Instagram, follow his YouTube channel, ask him to join the WhatsApp group. Um, if somebody's like on the fence about learning Spanish, what do you tell them? Why should they learn Spanish? For what? Um, well, is I always say it depends upon the person, you know, because sometimes we want to, bro, but we don't put the effort towards like doing it, you know, like wanting, like you have to make things a priority. So if I feel like if you're serious with it, then I'm gonna be serious with you with it. Yeah. You get me? That is how I roll, brother. Like your your my your energy have to match mine because I can't be like giving up myself to you and you know, giving up yourself the same way. Yeah. Yeah, so but if you if you feel like you are really really ready then like not only me but the entire group that we created like is ready to help you out so if you feel like you're still shy or you're not ready to be on the live or anything and you're not still taking baby steps then i would actually give you a lot of suggestions i would tell you like well watch this video i got like maybe in this video, you know, you I will tell you like certain things that you can do, you know, certain um recommendation or suggestion that you can do to learn the language faster. I would like recommend you like books, you know, like and stuff like that. And then when you're ready, ready to take the next step, then like which is the conversation, like then you can you can um join the WhatsApp group or you can join the live. Okay. Well. I'm gonna send them your way, bro. And uh hopefully, hopefully we get some more people learning Spanish, bro. Anything or anything, brother. Like you hear what the shirt said? It's a love, uh, you know. So anybody yeah. from that is all I'm gonna receive over here. You get me? I respect it, bro. Yeah, no, nah, you you you're a good dude, man. I got nothing but good vibes from you. So appreciate it, brother. Hey man, I'm glad we finally got you on here, man. Now now I have to get you on mine. <laughs> hey. Hey, well, yeah, just let me know, bro. I'm down. I'm down, bro. All right, brother. But thank you. Thank you for having me, dog. And like I said, I know this was a long time, but we've been knowing each other for a while now, you know, like, even if it's not even in person, dog, like, I don't think we'll be any different. You get me what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, no, definitely. Regardless if it's, if it's online or in person, I feel like we always gonna have this brotherly love and respect, mutual respect to each, towards each other, you know, so... Definitely. Just want to thank you, brother, um, for giving me this opportunity once again for being on your on your podcast. You know, I see you do a lot of different stuff. You get me. You you talk about like like things that is actually happening in people's life, things that people go through in in daily life that can help others as well. Too. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. If I have to big you up for that and tell you continue doing what you do, brother, regardless of what anybody got to say. Only you know your vision and where you want to reach with this. I appreciate you, bro. Hey, if you're ever in Washington, bro, let me know. Or if I'm ever in Houston, I'm gonna hit you up, bro. Nah, for my one on one. My yeah. basketball game. <laughs> <laughs> we can we can make that happen, man. No worries. <laughs> All right, bro. I'm a I'm a end the call. I'm Take glad care. I got you on here, man. Be easy. Peace. That Lord, that Lord. <laughs>